just got this in. It's the Isheen Cinecan 4K Cinewoo. If you are sick and tired of taking video that looks like crap for models of this size, I hear you. And that's why I was really excited to take a look at it. The Cinecan is my first Cinewoop. It's amazing to be able to shoot such high definition video from a quad of this type and form factor, especially with a spec sheet like this. But does it deliver everything it seems to be? Let's find out. The flight experience is shockingly good for its size and weight. Doing any acro with these models is usually asking for trouble, but I was able to roughly pull off some basic moves like power loops and split S's. There are some improvements that could be made, but they still did something right here with the starting tune. Now, I'm not very good at hitting gates, but I've recently started practicing, and this was my first go at it, with just two of them placed in my backyard. How cool is it to fly through these gates and be able to share back such high definition footage of it back with you guys? Speaking of high definition, let's talk more about the camera quality and interface experience since the Cadex Tarsier 4K camera is at least over half of what you're going to be buying here. It's a 4K camera and it consists of two sensors. One is for your FPV view and the other is for high definition video. This keeps your FPV experience virtually lag free without worrying about compromising on the HD video experience. The piece on the front of the camera that I just pulled off is not a lens protector. It is actually an ND filter. It's an ND8 filter intended to ward off jello effect from any vibrations on the craft as well as reduce glare. You definitely don't want to fly with this in low light conditions such as at night. Now, although the video quality is superb and there's no lag in the FPV feed, I'm going to complain a bit about the field of view on this camera. The field of view on 4K is 150 degrees and 16 by 9, while field of view on 2.7K at 60 FPS is 4x3, 165 degrees. I'm not really sure why they did this. I filmed in 2.7K at 60 FPS because I wanted to capture every frame since I was moving fast. For slow and flying, you'll want to go 4K, but you're only going to be able to get 30 FPS. For the interface, you need to access it by using these two buttons here. The button closest to the back is the one you'll be using most commonly. It starts or stops your video pro recording with a short press. That's the light that you're going to be looking for, and that is saying, hey, I'm recording. So we're going to press this little button in very for like one second and there we go it stops. Now the way to access the interface or the app you're going to need to hold that button down for five to eight seconds and then connect to the camera via a Wi-Fi network uh, from your smartphone or your tablet. The app is called the Cadex FPV app. And this is where you're going to find all the standard options for the camera, image control settings, as well as device settings. Uh, please note that you have to format the micro SD card FAT32 with 64K sectors, or you're going to have issues recording HD video. Um, you could do this on the computer, but the Cadex FPV app will take care of you for that as well under the device settings section. Now, the card that you use needs to be rated at least U3, a, a class 10 card, simply won't do it. The SanDisk Extreme series should work fine. Now here's where almost all the good about this drone's high definition quality goodness comes crashing down a bit. The onboard Free Sky receiver is a joke. It dropped out in my backyard after farling up and attempting a roll. Initially I thought I had a brownout, but that was not the case. I tried to fly around my house from the back to the front, and th this would be the worst case scenario, especially with me sitting under the edge of my porch, and I couldn't get very far. I attempted a range test from my porch to one of the construction tractors out there, and you can see the signal just keeps getting worse and worse as I fly along, until finally it, it just drops because I'm having control lag as I further get out there. Now, I did move my chair out from under my porch and attempted the flight again, 
but the signal was miserable, so I just decided to come back because I didn't want to do the walk of shame. The takeaway here is that the Cinecan is best purchased without any receiver in it at all. Unless you're planning to just stay in a small space, such as, you know, my backyard, there's no point in using an onboard receiver that you can't trust. And even then, even then, it, it was fail-safing in my backyard. So you're going to save money by just going the no receiver route with this one. Unfortunately, it is a huge shame that if you want to fly and have a good range and confidence using a free sky radio, that's what you have to do. But it is what it is. Let's discuss durability. I've crashed this drone quite a bit so far, and the only things that have happened to it are the loss of the ND8 filter, which popped off after one of the fail-safe crashes, actually, and luckily I found it. Um, it's an $8 item, but yeah, I got it back, so plan to maybe have one of these on hand just in case you lose it. Um, I've noticed that the plugs for the video transmitter here will sometimes come loose in very hard crashes but again you can easily just push those back in you don't have to open it up you just take a little screwdriver and push those back in there here's really the only sign of any damage i've truly done to it so far you can see that little crack there in the base but Again, it's, it's done nothing to it in terms of flight performance or even video performance. Now, I think that you would still break this thing if you were hitting something harder like concrete, but it's not the delicate flower that I thought it might have been when I took it out of the box. Those of you who follow my channel will remember that I burned the Cellfly X on three cell batteries, the very same batteries that I use for the Cinecan. I am happy to report that in over 20 packs of flight, I have experienced zero issues with the flight controller burning out. There are some major changes on the Crazy B 3.0 flight controller. They've doubled the ESC capability from 5 amps to 10 amps each, okay? And they've upgraded the power regulator to the proper one so that you won't blow the board by simply plugging in a three cell battery. You'll notice that on this model, there's no capacitor, okay? There's no capacitor. This was only added because uh, it something needed to absorb the initial inrush of current because the board's regulator would potentially pop. I'll cautiously state that I believe the new 3.0 flight controller has resolved the issues that so many previous versions suffered. I'll be looking forward to buying one of these boards to fix my Cellfly X in the future as I've gained a lot of confidence from flying it with the Cinecan. Barring any quality control issues, the design seems to just be more sound. Well, that's it. That's my review of the Ishin Cinecan. I hope you enjoyed the review and found it honest as well as informative. If you liked the review, please hit that like button as it helps the channel out. And if you have a Cinewoop, have you got one? Uh, did you buy the Cinecan and how do you like it? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. As always, have a great day, guys, and uh, I'm going to go do some flying.